Let's consider this question. Why is melting ice a spontaneous process at temperatures above the freezing point and freezing is a spontaneous process below the freezing point? Explain in terms of the equation above. So let's illustrate what happens when we're melting something and freezing. You can see illustrations of the solid and the liquid form. So during the process of melting, we have a solid becoming a liquid. Now, the entropy of a solid is less than the entropy of a liquid. So in a liquid, the particles have more motion. There's, there's a higher probability that they will uh, be in the liquid, uh, the, the additional motion of the liquid state, higher entropy in this state versus the solid state. Or we could say there's more disorder in the liquid state. So as we go from a solid to a liquid, the entropy is increasing. So delta S is positive. So we have a positive delta S. Let me rewrite that. So positive delta S. Now, as we go from the solid to liquid state, is the enthalpy delta H, would that be increasing or decreasing? So delta H would be also positive. This is an endothermic process. <clears throat> we have to add heat in order to melt ice. So let's think about the equation. The delta G value is the enthalpy minus the temperature times the change in entropy. So the change in enthalpy is positive and the change in entropy is also positive. However, as a term for this whole term, <coughs> notice we have a negative sign. So this whole term, if the entropy is positive, that gets multiplied by a negative, which means that the whole term would be negative. Now we know that the process is spontaneous if delta G is negative. So if delta G is less than one, that's spontaneous. So that's spontaneous. And then if delta G is greater than one, that would be non-spontaneous. And then when delta G is equal to one, that is equilibrium. So now it comes down to a balance of how much the temperature affects this situation. In order for delta G to be negative, the entropy, this term, the entropy times the temperature has to amount to a greater value than the enthalpy so that the overall value for delta G comes out as negative. So the, the thing that affects this then, it comes down to the value of T. So when the temperature is high, this term is higher, a greater value than the enthalpy resulting in an overall negative delta G value. And it uh, supports our common sense that melting happens at higher temperatures. So let's illustrate then what happens during freezing. So freezing is when a liquid go becomes a solid. So the entropy is higher in the liquid state. There, It's a more disordered form we could say than the solid state. 
So the entropy as it goes from a liquid to a solid is decreasing. So negative change in entropy. Now the enthalpy, delta H, as we go from liquid to solid, we have to remove heat as the ice freezes. So that is um, exothermic as well. It's an exothermic process, so delta H is also negative. So if we consider the equation, delta G is the change in enthalpy minus the temperature times the change in entropy. So the enthalpy is negative. Now the entropy is negative, but as a term, this whole term would be positive because a negative entropy would get multiplied by this negative value to make this positive. So it comes down to the temperature once again to determine whether the free energy would be negative or positive. So when the temperature is low, that means that the enthalpy has a greater effect on delta G or causes the delta G to be negative as opposed to positive. And again, if the temperature was high, then we would see that delta G would be positive and the free energy change of greater than one is non-spontaneous. So this is how the temperature effect of freezing and melting can be explained using the free energy concept. And of course it confirms our common understanding that freezing happens at low temperatures.